In this video, I will teach you the techniques required to write testable code in C Sharp. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the class that we would like to unit test. This is an API monitoring repository. It has one method which checks the health of an API. It does this by performing a GET request to the API. If the response has a success status code, it returns the health status healthy. If not, it returns the status unhealthy. The goal of unit testing is to test small units of code. We do not want to test dependencies of our code. Therefore, it is important to identify dependencies and replace them with mocks. Mocks give us the possibility to get control over the behavior of a dependency. To do this, our dependencies need to be loosely coupled. If we look at our current code, we can see that we are strongly coupled to our HTTP client. We cannot replace our HTTP client with a mock because of that. One tip to detect tightly coupled dependencies is by looking for the new keyword. Okay, now that we know this, how can we make our dependency loosely coupled instead of tightly coupled? In order to achieve that, we will have to rewrite a small part of our code. The design pattern that I use to achieve loose coupling is called dependency injection. With dependency injection, you inject the dependency inside the constructor of the class that uses the dependency and then you can replace it with a mock for your unit tests. Let's start off by moving the HTTP client to a new class. I will add an API monitoring client and this will be the dependency that will be consumed by the repository. I will make it a public class and the creation of the HTTP client can be moved from the repository to the client. I'll paste that here and add the missing using. Then I will create the method that performs the GET request and returns the HTTP response message. It will be a public asynchronous method that returns an HTTP response message. I will name it get response async. And the content of this method can be copied from here. But instead of assigning it to a variable, I will just return it directly. Okay, um, although it is possible to inject concrete types uh, with dependency injection, I prefer the usage of interfaces. Because of that, I will create an interface for this client. I do it using the quick actions. And I expect the default to be exactly as I want it. Yes, it is. Okay, so that created the client that we will use for dependency injection. Now, if we go back to the repository, I will create the constructor. And like I said, I will inject the dependency inside the constructor. So this is API, the interface of the API monitoring client. I will name that client and I will assign it to a read-only field. And now we will have to change this. So it uses this new client, get response. And there we have the same result, although this time we do it using dependency injection. And as you can see, we are now no longer tightly coupled. We are now inject injecting an interface. So in the scenario where we would run our application, we would inject the implementation of the interface that does the actual call with the HTTP client. But in this case, we will inject a, a mock and injecting that mock will give us control over the response from the client. So at this point, we're ready to start creating our first unit test. So I will add a new project to the solution. That 
will be an X unit test project. You could also use other unit testing frameworks like MS test or N unit, but I prefer X unit. So this is fine for me. The name that I use will be the name of the project that I will test. And at the end, I will add a dot and test. It's a pretty common convention, but you are free to use whatever you prefer. I'll remove this unnecessary using, and then I will rename the class that is created by default. The convention that I use for classes is pretty much the same. I'm testing the API monitoring repository and I will add tests at the end. So this will be API monitoring repository test. The convention for naming the unit tests themselves is a bit different, but also not hard. The convention that I use is I start off with the subject under test. Then I add an underscore and I will describe the test scenario. Let's go back to the repository. What was it? We wanted to test that if the client returns a response with a success status code, that the repository returns the health status healthy. So client returns response with success status code and lastly we add the expected result the expected result in this case would be returns health status healthy as you can see titles can become quite long using this convention if you want you can strip it a bit in this case we could remove the client returns part here and here we could also just type returns healthy. So let's do that to keep it a bit more easy to read. Client returns it can also be removed. Oh, and at this point we still have subject under test. We need to replace that with the method that we are testing, which is in this case is healthy. So this is a pretty descriptive title for what uh, the unit test does. It tests the method is healthy. The scenario that we want to test is a client response with a success status code. And we expect the result of the repository to be uh, a healthy status code. Now, we will divide our test in three parts, arrange, act, and assert. We will start with arrange. In this part, we will uh, create mocks if there are any dependencies in our code. And we will also uh, make a setup for our mocks where we will control the behavior of the dependency. And another thing we do here is uh, creating an instance of the repository so we can actually call its method later on. So let's start with uh, creating a mock for the API monitoring client. Uh, mock is a class of the mocking framework MockU. I have not yet installed a NuGet package, so I will do that now. It takes a generic type of uh, the class you want to mock. In our case, that will be I API moni monitoring client. For some reason, adding a reference to the data access project is not suggested, suggested by the quick action. So I will add the reference manually. Project reference and data access. I don't know why it doesn't recommend it automatically. Normally it does, but perhaps a glitch in Visual Studio. Doesn't matter that much, we have it here. Uh, now let's create the return type of the mock. In this case, it will be an HTTP response message with a success status code. So let's name this response message and create a new instance of HTTP response message. 
it has a constructor that takes an HTTP status code. Yes. And I will use the status code. Okay. Now the last thing we need to do for the mock is create a setup for the method that we want to that we will use in the repository code. So in this case, that will be client.setup and the method name is get response async. And we want that method to return asynchronously because it's an asynchronous call. And then we return the response message that we created above. Uh, one thing remaining and that is creating an instance of the repository do that by creating the API monitoring repository and it now takes an iAPI monitoring client in its constructor that will be client.object and that is all we need to do for the arrange part the next steps are even shorter in this case uh, what we want to do here is call the method that we are actually testing and that is the is healthy method of the repository and we want to assign the result of this of that method to a variable i will name the variable result and then call the repositories method is healthy async Oh, I see that this is still a void that needs to be an async task. Okay, so there we have the result. The only thing remaining is checking if it met matches our expectation. We do that by calling assert.equal. First we enter what we expect, that is health status dot healthy. And we compare that to the result from the repository. And there we have it, our first unit test. The only thing we need to do now is run the test and see if it actually passes. I will press Control RT again. Ah, something seems to happen this time, so I think we will get a step further. And as you can see, we get a green check mark meaning that the test actually passed. Now for the second test scenario, I will start by copying this method. The subject under test remains the same, but the test scenario is response with non-success status code and the expected result is returns unhealthy we need a few changes here we need to change the http status context to one that does not indicate success i will use bad request for this test and the rest pretty much stays the same except for the assertion because in this case we expect the health status to be unhealthy that's it Let's run this test as well. And after a bit of waiting, we will see that this test passes just like the other one did. With the techniques you learned in this video, you should be able to write testable code and write your own unit tests. What remains is getting your hands dirty and writing unit tests on your own. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.